Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting the Huntsman's Minions from Bloodborne by Simon Games. Hey everyone, Matt here from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to the second episode in this Bloodborne series. Now the first episode in this series was the unboxing, which means today is the first time that I'm painting minis. And so we are kicking this series off with the Huntsman's Minions. These are one of the enemy types that you can come up against in this adventure and exploration game from Simon Games. So when I first started looking at the minis that comes with Bloodborne, trying to work out which ones I was going to start with, I was immediately drawn to the Huntsman's minions, and for a couple of different reasons. First of all, there's four of them, so I knew that by the time I'd finished painting them, I'd already have four minis from the game done, so that was an obvious positive. But the main reason, though, was that there's a really, really good balance between the Huntsman's minions being fairly simple, so it's really just the skin, cloak, bandages, and pants, but they've also got a cool dynamic pose. So the way they're holding the brick up there and that their cloak on their back kind of flows off to the side as though it's being blown around in the wind means that they'd be fairly quick and easy to paint, but there's enough in the sculpt that they're still going to look cool. Now I found all of this to be true, they are quick and easy to paint, except that I spent a lot lot longer on these guys than what I initially intended. And that's not because they were more difficult to paint than what I thought they would be, it's just that I found that I was enjoying painting them a lot more than what I thought I would. Now I thought I would enjoy painting them, don't get me wrong there, but I just found as I was painting them, I just kept wanting to do more and more, like adding more texture and more depth in the shading and things like that because I was just enjoying painting them so much. Now I don't want to jump the gun here but these could be my favorite minis that I've ever painted. Not specifically in terms of just the quality to which I was able to paint them but just with how much I enjoyed them. So I really hope you enjoy watching this video because I really really enjoyed painting them. Now, like I said earlier, there are four Huntsman's Minions, but in this video, I'm only going to show you how I paint one of them so that I can show you really in depth how I complete each step instead of chopping and changing between each of them. But what I did do though, so that the Huntsman's Minions don't end up looking like just straight clones of each other, I did some variations between each one in terms of the pants colors, the skin and the cloak and things like that. So they look like they all belong together, but that there is some natural variation from one to the next. So at the end of each step, as much as possible, as much as I could remember to take a photo, I will put a photo up that shows how all four of them are progressing alongside each other so that you can see where I do some variation and the how the different colors help sort of keep tying them together. So in terms of footage, you'll just see me paint this one here from start to finish, but you will see photos along the way so that you can see how all of them look as I go through each step. So as a starting point, I just lay down a Xenothal Prime as I usually do. So that's just hitting them with black all over and then gray from a fairly high angle and then white from directly above. You'll notice in this video that I use my airbrush for the gray and the white and a rattle can for the black. That's purely because I don't have any black primer for my airbrush at the moment. But I've shifted to my airbrush for the gray and the white because you get a much more subtle shift from one color to another with the airbrush as opposed to using the rattle can. Now rattle cans are fine, but if you have an airbrush, I absolutely recommend it for that. So that Zenithal Prime just showed where the brightest highlights and the darkest shadows should be. So I took a couple of photos before starting to paint just to make sure that when I get to the highlighting and shading, I can keep them all of the, the brights and the darks to where they should be. But also it just helps with the base coating to keep certain parts lighter than others. It's very, very subtle, but it does just help to keep the top part of the mini a bit brighter so that when people are looking at the mini, their gaze is drawn to the upper parts of the mini where I want them to be. 
And then from there, it was just a case of base coding, which is what I'm doing at the moment. And earlier I mentioned that I tried to get some variation from one mini to another so that they don't look like clones of each other. So I had the artwork for the Huntsman's Minions that I worked on just to get an impression of the, the overall look and what the sort of feel is for these guys. And you can see here that it's lots of dark colours, they've just been thrown whatever rags are lying around, and that they're really tattered and rough looking. And so that really shaped the colour choices that I used, so I stuck to lots of browns and greys, but then just mix in some greens and things like that. So that the colours all made sense in terms of who this character should be, but that they weren't all exactly the same, and it just looked like there was some natural variation from one to the next. Now what you can see here is that I'm painting back over the cloak with this one, so it didn't actually matter that I lost the footage of the original base coating. But the reason that I'm painting back over this one is that I just found that the green that I, or the amount of green that I'd mixed in for the cloak colour for this one just didn't really match against the colours of the others because they were browns and grey. And I just found this grey just stuck out too much, it just looked that little bit too different. So that was something that I was really, really mindful of as I was choosing the skin colour and cloak and pants colour, was that they were different enough so that they didn't just look like they were complete clones of each other, just for exactly the same Huntsman's Minions, but also that the colours weren't too different that it looked odd, so it wasn't like three of them had brown cloaks and one of them had hot pink. They still needed to look like as though they belonged together, but I figure, you know, kind of thinking of who these characters are, they're just some lowly minions that would have just been thrown whatever rags were lying around. And so browns and greys are the colours that make sense for that. So for each part, I started with brown or grey as the base colour for it, and then I just mixed in some greens or yellows, different colours like that, but just subtly so that there were just slight shifts from one to the next, but just making sure that it was different enough that it didn't look like they were just complete clones of each other. And I was really, really happy with how this came up in the end, especially when the four of them are standing next to each other in a group, because that natural variation does work really, really well. So here I'm starting the first layer of the highlighting for the skin and you'll see that I base coated with a mix of a skin tone and a bit of grey and blue just to try and get a bit of a sickly kind of tone as though all of the warmth has come out of the skin. And then I put the Reichland Flesh Shade Wash over the top just to do the shading, just to flow into those recesses and create the shadows. Now for the first stage of the highlighting, I've just gone straight back to the base coat colour that I mixed together. So that skin tone, grey and blue. And I'm just applying this to anywhere that I think the skin would be getting any amount of light so that that where the Reichland flesh shade settled that's really just going to be the shadows and then everywhere else will get some amount of this base coat color again and then once I finish this first layer pretty much hitting most of of the skin, I will then just mix in a little bit more of the grey and the blue just to lighten it off a little bit and to take it away from that warmer skin tone that there is initially. 
And then to continue lightening it layer by layer, I'll start to add in Misty Grey, which is my lighter grey, and that'll just gradually make it lighter and lighter and lighter as I further reduce the amount of surface area that I cover until I'm just painting those final little bits that are going to be getting the most amount of light, which will pretty much just be the nose, maybe the tops of the cheeks, just so that it creates a lot of lightness at the top of the mini, as opposed to down the bottom, which will hopefully draw as much attention to his face as people are looking at it rather than the bottom parts of the mini but yeah so it's just going back to that base coat color and then just gradually mixing in lighter and lighter grays layer by layer and reducing the amount of surface area until the last layer is pretty much straight misty gray my brightest gray where i apply it to just the tiniest areas that are getting the most amount of light So here I'm starting to get into the highlighting and the shading for the pants and there's nothing special going on here. I'm just using several layers to build up to the darker shadows or the brightest highlights. So for the shading here, I've just taken the same brown that I used to base coat the pants with, but I've just mixed in a little bit of black just to darken it off. And I've also mixed in quite a bit of water just to thin it down so that there isn't too much difference from one layer to the another. And it being thin really helps me control over how quick Quickly it builds up to that darker shadow. So all I do is I put the paint down where I want the darkest part of the shadow to be. And then I clean most of the paint off the bristles. Now I'm a brush licker, but you can do it by putting your brush in the water. And then with the damp bristles, I then just feather out the edges away from where I want the darker shadow to be, just to blend it back into the base coat color of the pants. And then once that's dry, then with the second layer, I'll cover the same sort of areas, but just not cover as much area. So I'll keep it to where I want the, the shadows to be their darkest, but I just won't paint it all the way out to the edge of where I painted the previous layer. But then again, clean off the bristles and then feather out the edge of that paint that's just been put down in the direction away from where the darkest part of the shadow is intended to be. And by building it up over several layers like this and just feathering out the edges, it helps to create nice smooth blends from one layer to the next so that you avoid getting those real defined lines that you can sometimes get when you're trying to shift from one color to another. And then once the shading's finished, I then get into doing the highlighting, which is done in the exact same way, just kind of in reverse. So I'll go back to the base coat color for the pants, but mix in a lighter brown, and then put that down anywhere that I think the pants will be getting any amount of light, and then clean off the bristles, feather out the edges in the direction away from where I want the brightest highlight to be. Let that dry, mix in a little bit more of that lighter brown, which you can see I'm just going to start doing here, and then just put the paint down again where I think the light will be hitting, but just to a smaller surface area than the previous layer, 
blend out those edges again, let it dry, make the tone a little bit lighter, and then just keep repeating that process over and over and over. But as the surface area gets smaller and smaller and smaller, the paint color is getting lighter and lighter and lighter until I'm just painting where the brightest highlight would be. And of course, I'm referring back to the images that I took to make sure that I've got these in the right spot. But the real key here is that in between each layer, you feather out those edges because the idea there is that as you're feathering them out, you're making that paint thinner and thinner and thinner until you finish spreading it so that it's going to allow more and more and more of the color underneath to show through. And that's how I get those smooth blends from one layer to another. And now what I'm doing here is the first step in the process of creating a sort of frayed or tattered look to the end of each pant leg because I want these to really look as though they're damaged, old and worn. And so I took that lighter colour and I just did some vertical lines or striations, I suppose, running parallel in the direction of the pant leg. And I varied the length of them. But for that first layer, I tried to keep each of them fairly long and quite close to each other. So that then when I do the second layer of those lines, I'll have lightened the colour off even more. And then I'll keep the lines a little bit shorter and just spread a little bit further apart so that it still allows some of that first layer of lines to show through. So now we've got some darker lines and some lighter lines. And then I'll lighten it off even more. And then each time I do that, I'll just reduce the length of each of the lines and how far apart they are so that you've then got all these different layers of the color coming through which will give the effect of aging. And then by finishing the last layer just around the bottom edge of the pants with a really, really light brown, it will give the impression of scuffing and scratching and things like that because these guys have been stuck with these pants for a very, very long time. And so over time, they've become really, really worn and tattered and aged. So here I'm doing the final layer of this frayed edges and you can see I've gone to like a really, really bright bone color now. I've moved away from just a brown and you can see I'm being really, really careful just to pick just the bottom edges of the pants and then only really, really short lines to allow as much of those other lines that I've done to come through to get that variation in tone to give the effect of aging. But with that really, really bright color around the bottom edge, it makes that look like really fresh scuff marks and adds to the overall worn look that I'm going for. And here I'm just starting to do the toe and fingernails. And with these, I wanted them to look like as though they're fairly rotten because they wouldn't be looked after at all. So I laid down brown first. And then with the aged bone here, I'm covering up sort of three quarters, I suppose, of the nail, but just leaving the brown at the base where it joins the toe or finger, whatever, exposed. And then I'll finish it off with then a lighter bone color, which is here. And this is more than just for the, the end of it, so that it's still got that nail color, but having the lighter and darker bone color and then having the brown just exposed at the base just helps to give that rotten kind of unkept sort of look, which is that overall look that I'm going for between the nails, skin, and all of his clothing.
Alright, so when I was working on the bandages earlier in the video, I initially laid down a skeleton bone base coat just so that it started off nice and light. And then I used the Seraphim Sepia wash over the top. Now I did that for two reasons. First of all was so that it could quite clearly bring out all of the different layers of the bandages and do that really, really quickly because I was not going to spend the time to individually paint in nice thin lines to show the different joins between them. So the wash just flowed nicely into all of those recesses to bring out those details. But then I also applied the wash just to dirty up the bandages so it looks as though they've been applied a long time ago and never been changed since, which is just another way of adding to this rough and dirty overall look that I'm going for with the Huntsman's Minions. But now I'm just going around and cleaning up the bandages a bit because I want each individual bandage to be a little bit more defined and to stand out a little bit more. But also I don't want the bandages to look like they've evenly aged and become discolored. So I want some parts to be a bit lighter and some parts to be a little bit darker. And so I'm starting that off by going to the aged bone, which is a darker bone color than the skeleton bone, which is what I initially base coated with. And for that, I pretty much just went around and paint, repainted all of the surfaces of the bandages, just not the underside so that it kind of looks like they'd be in shadow, but any part that would be getting some light, I kind of just, yeah, painted that aged bone in, but was very, very careful to make sure that I didn't touch any of the edges where the wash had pulled, just so we've got that really nice dark, defined line in between each of the layers. And now I've moved to the skeleton bone color back to that lighter bone color that I initially base coated with. And with this, I'm just putting it down in the spot on each bandage that would basically be getting the most amount of direct sunlight. And I'm not putting too much down, just a little bit of a blob in that spot, and then just feathering out the edges in both directions. So then what's going to happen is there'll be a nice blend from the skeleton bone, which will just be at the brightest point, down to the aged bone, and then that'll then feather into what's left of the wash as well. But then, like I said earlier, there'll be that nice defined line created created by the wash earlier between each layer of the bandage. So overall, it'll look as though the bandages are old and discolored, but just to different degrees, which is again, a look I'm going for with these as though aging has happened over time and that the transformation into their current state has been a long and slow process.
All right, so now I'm getting into what I want to be the main focal point for the Huntsman's minions, and that is their damaged leather cloaks. Now, if you've seen damaged leather before, it typically cracks and gets scuff marks and has quite a bit of variation in the tone. And so that's what I'm trying to replicate here. And it's also going to add to that gradual aging over time look that I'm going for. So if you've seen some recent videos of mine, you'll have probably seen this technique before. It's one that I really, really like. I think it's very, very simple, but it gives a great effect at the end. So what I'm doing here for the first layer is just using the skeleton bone to lay down lots of lines of different thicknesses and lengths, as well as lots of little dots as well. And this is just going to lay down the base layer of all of the scratches and scuff marks that I'm going for. So you can see here, I've covered a very large portion of the cloak with it, because then what I do after this is I lay down these four different washes, just no real reason as to any particular area that they go down in, but I just slop them all on, and then while they're all wet, then just blend them together. So you can see I laid down some of the, the sepia wash. Now I've got some red there that I'm blending together. I'll use some green and some yellow. This is just to create some natural variation, but it will still allow the initial base coat color of the cloak, which is that dark gray, to come through. And then once this is dry, then I'll go back with the bone color and reapply all of those lines and dots. But each time I reapply the bone color, I just won't cover as much area as what I did with the first one. So I'll still cover it to all surfaces of the cloak, but I just won't cover as much area. So that then once that's dry, I'll then reapply the wash. And then what'll happen is that because I haven't covered up all of the first layer of the dots and scratches with the second layer of them, it'll allow some of that initial layer to still show through. And then I just keep repeating that process of laying down these dots and scratches, then put the wash over the top, more dots and scratches, more wash, until I get to the final, final layer of the dots and scratches where I only do very, very small, careful ones, just around the very edge of all of the cloak, so that you then end up with three or four layers of these dots and scratches coming through with varying amounts of wash over the top, so that it looks like it's really aged because those dots and scratches aren't as aren't all, sorry, as visible as each other. And so it just gives the impression that over time, this leather has dried and cracked. Maybe also a few marks have been taken from some battles, but that, yeah, it just hasn't all happened at the same time. And an important thing to note that when putting the wash down, I don't necessarily put yellow over a spot where I put yellow in a previous layer or green over green. I just, I mix it up so that we get some really nice natural variations in the tones. What I also did is I made sure that for each of the four of the minions that I concentrated on different colors. So for one, I might have put more red and then for another one, I put down more green just so that it comes back to what I was talking about earlier where I'm trying to get some variation from one to the next so they don't all look like they're just clones of each other. Here I'm now onto the final layer of the bone color. So just doing these final scuff marks. And you can see I'm really just keeping these to just the very, very edge of the cloak. So it looks like these are just the most recent scuff marks that have happened. But you can see I'm doing lots of lines, but then really doing lots and lots of flicks around the edge, just so that it really looks as though the edge of the cloak has started to fray and just taken quite a few scuff marks, which will then create a bit of contrast between the edge and then the rest of the cloak. So that it looks as though the main part of the cloak hasn't taken quite as much damage as what the edge has. But I absolutely love this technique. I've done it a few times now. And I think one of the reasons why I like it so much is that it's one of those ones where the less you think about it, the better it comes up. If you think too much about it and are too deliberate with where you put all these lines and dots or the wash, it just, the effect doesn't work as well because you're trying to recreate here the natural aging of leather or material. And so if you think about it too much, it doesn't really come up. So you can see there the way that it looks in the end. So yeah, all those lines and dots come through to varying degrees because they've got different amounts of wash over the top. And so it just creates that really cool aged damaged leather look that I was going for.
So with the cloaks finished, we're going to call the Huntsman's Minions done. So thank you very, very much for checking out another one of my videos. I really do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with future videos as they keep coming out. Also, please do stop by the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts for this channel, where I regularly post pictures of what I'm working on at the moment so that you know what's going to be coming up in the future. And if you found one of my videos useful, whether it was you copied a particular technique or color scheme, I would love it if you would take some pictures, post it to Twitter or Instagram and tag me in it so that I can see how my videos are helping your painting as well. Some of you have done that and I love seeing that. So please do post to, to those different social medias. But we're going to leave it there. So until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.